For thousands of years, encryption has been very important to keep data secure. In this video, I'll be talking about ciphers over time. So one of the first ciphers ever used is called the Caesar shift, named in honor of Julius Caesar. So when you're encoding this, it would shift a letter however many places down the alphabet, and you would get your encrypted message out of there. Now this was very easy to crack because not all letters are used with the same frequency. So using frequency analysis, you can determine what letters are what, and also using a bit of guesswork. The next cipher was used a lot by the Spartans, and it's called the Skittily cipher. To encode using this cipher, you would take a long piece of leather and wrap it around some cylinder, and you would write across the leather straps. Then, once you unrolled the leather from the cylinder, you would not be able to read down the leather, and you would need to have another cylinder of exactly the same diameter. They use this a lot for military communication, where they would all have the same standard issue spear to wrap it around. So we can even demonstrate this with a small strip of paper and a pencil. So what we can do is take this paper and wrap it around here. If it helps, you can put a little piece of tape on there. So we can even demonstrate this with a strip of paper and a pencil. So what we're going to do is take the paper, and if it helps, we can put a little piece of tape, and then we're just going to wrap it around here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're just gonna write our message directly that way. And now what we're just gonna do is to take the tape off and unravel the message. So you can see here, this message is just undecipherable, it's just meaningless, until you start to wrap it around the pencil, and ta-da, the message becomes clear. The Enigma machine was a method of encryption used by the Germans in World War II. It looked like a big typewriter with a couple rotors on it. So when one letter would come in, it would go through a bunch of wiring in each of these rotors and each rotor would scramble the letters. Now this isn't that much of an issue because scrambling can be cracked using frequency analysis. But what the Enigma machine does is that each time a letter is pressed, the rightmost of the three rotors ticks forward one, so all the wiring changes. And once, once that gets to a full rotation, the middle rotor ticks one, and then when that gets to a full rotation, finally, the leftmost rotor ticks by one. And this ensures that when you press the same letter twice, you're going to get two different letters out. So you can't use frequency analysis to crack this. To make it even more challenging, they added a plug board, which would just take two letters and swap them. So if you put A and G together, when you pushed A, it would take G's path. And when you pushed G, it would take A's path. To decrypt this on the other side, you would need another Enigma machine, and you'd need to know the exact setup of all of the rotors and the plug board to decrypt the message right. So a combination of Polish and British efforts ended up breaking this code. Most famously, Alan Turing built the bomb machine, which was used to decode the Enigma. With his team at Bletchley Park, they would try and speed up the process by guessing for certain words. For example, the Germans would often send a weather report at the start of the day, so they would look for the word weather, and this helped them crack it faster each day, because the settings would be different every day. Now that they had solved the Enigma machine, they could anticipate when attacks were coming, but they didn't want to let the Germans know that they had cracked it, so the Allies had to choose which attacks they were going to let happen so they wouldn't let the Germans on. So modern encryption uses keys, which are very large numbers, to encrypt the data. This key is kept secret, 
So this means that the encryption algorithm, the actual method of encrypting the data, doesn't need to be kept secret because the key is required to decrypt it. Some encryption systems, known as asymmetric encryption, use a public and a private key, where the public key is, as it suggests, public, and is used to encrypt the data. In order to decrypt that data, you need to use the private key. That way only the receiver will ever have the key, so you don't need to send it and fear it being intercepted. So that's all for this time. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss part two of this video, where I'm going to actually build a demo Enigma machine.